This segment is brought to you by Jig Masters. Step up your game with high quality performance jigs, spinner baits, buzz baits, and more from JigMasters.com. And always, when in doubt, get the jig out. Welcome to the Bass Guy. I can be a segment on the Paddle and Pin Network. It's your host, Armando Solan. And on this segment, we kick back with a special guest and talk about life, kayak fishing, and the pursuit of big bass. So get your cold brews on and enjoy the show. Welcome once again to the Bass Kayak and Beer segment on the Paddle and Fin Podcast. Hope you guys had a great holiday weekend. First episode of the year. I'm very excited. I got one of my favorite content creators and influencers on social media. And she has a great story to tell. I have a lot of respect for what she does, not only on her social media, but on the water. And, um, and a lot of things she's overcome in her life. And I'm, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this episode. So if you haven't met her, her name is Rebecca Lentz. You might know her on Instagram and on TikTok as Lady Angela Lentz. So we're going to bring her on board. Before we do, as always, almost forgot, shout out to our sponsors, Douglas Outdoors. Go to douglasoutdoors.com to check out their full lineup of LRS rods, Matrix rods, and their award-winning fly fishing rods. So quick thank you to Douglas Rods for sponsoring that show. Perfect. So we're going to have Miss Lady Angler Lenz, as you know her on Instagram. Otherwise, Rebecca Lenz. How are you, Rebecca? Hey, I'm great. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you so much for coming to my show. It's an honor to have you on my show. Uh, we have a, uh, like I said, I have a lot of respect for you, and I know you have a great story that we want to share with my audience. But uh, to start, let's tell us a little bit about yourself, Rebecca. For those that have, don't know you and I've been following you on social media. Tell us, you know, a uh, little bit about you, how you got uh, into kayak fishing and fly fishing, which I know is probably your favorite pastime. And uh, yeah, go ahead. All right. Well, um, if you follow me, you probably already know I've got an accent. I'm very <laughs> still. <laughs> You'll see lots of videos of dogs, of hikes, of fishing, fly fishing, kayak. Uh, bass fishing, all of that. Um, I'm just hungry for more adventure and anything that gets me outdoors, honestly. That's awesome. Well, I, outdoors is probably the best place to live, especially right now with the pandemic, right? Like <laughs> a lot of more people are outdoor now than they used to be. More than ever. I think it's because they were like, you have to stay inside. So everyone's like, nope, let's all go outside. <laughs> great. Like fresh air. We need to reconnect with nature, pick up some hobbies. I think it's, it's actually, I mean, pandemic sucks, but what it's done with families and people really appreciating those connections yeah. and having those hobbies, it, it's changed a lot. I know. And the, even like kayak fishing and fishing in general, I see more people out there on the water and uh, more younger crowd too. Cause there's like, well, there's nothing to, especially with kayaks. You go to a kayak shop now. And it's good luck trying to get a good kayak because they sell out like real quick. Me, yeah, people are so want to be out there. So and that's great. That's awesome. But Rebecca, tell us a little bit about you. Other than fly fishing and kayak fishing, what do you do and how do you got to that point where you fell in love with fly fishing and kayak fishing? It was really odd, actually. Um, so on my birthday, the year before last, I'm 36, so on my 35th birthday, I just wanted to drive through the Ozarks here in Arkansas, and then um, wh whatever happened after that, that's it. So my fiance took me on a drive, and he asked, he was like, hey, can we pull over here to this crooked creek so I can bass fish? He was trying to catch Molly. I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, so while you do that, I'll do some yoga or something. And um, while I was doing yoga, there was this really hippie-esque looking dude out in the water. And I say this every time, but he looked like he had a ribbon dancer. So he was like, he was something <laughs> weird. Yeah, with his fly rod. And I was like, that guy doesn't know what he's doing or what is he doing? And of course he saw I was staring and was nice enough, he came over was like, hey, you want to try this? And of course, I looked at my fiance and he's like, yeah, try it, you know? And I sucked, um, couldn't cast or anything. And I just didn't, I kind of 
it looks so easy and it was not easy whatsoever so my fiance is like so do you like fishing you want to get to fish more because i never really had an interest so where we live we've got um, a, a small lake and that's whenever i got into bass fishing with a bait cast and i loved it but i couldn't get to like the lily pads or the sweet spot and he has a kayak and he had an extra kayak that sucked. It, it was this plug, is what we call it. It weighed a thousand pounds. And <laughs> I, I got tired of paddling. I just, I couldn't keep up. And then I didn't have an anchor, which did not realize how important having an anchor is. So you're not blowing away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I eventually got myself a pedal drive at, at the player propel. One, one of those nice ones. I just I figured I might as well pay good money for it now yep. and not do it. So that got me into fishing. Then um, I wanted to learn how to fly fish. And I kept like, I want to know how to fly fish. Let's fly fish. And that was something my fiance didn't do a lot of. So we got practice. I got a practice rod. He already had a rod. And we just started watching YouTube videos. We got out in the water and we just tried it. And that was a year and a half ago. And now it's just, it's, me. I like that is my life now. Is I can do fishing, fly fishing. I just water fishing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's great to be out there and fishing, even if you don't catch anything. I was having dinner with some friends. Um, we're kind of outdoors, so we're doing the whole social um distancing thing, but. One of my friends asking me, well, what do you do with the fish? I'm like, I just released it. And that blew his mind. It's like, I, I can understand. I'm like, well, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. It's insane. But, you know, it's something we love to do. <laughs> right? Exactly. Just, it, it's going to be late for something. I don't know. I, I Yeah, <laughs> I place as well. <laughs> Definitely. So, Rebecca, I know you you had a military background. Um, and I know you went through tough times in your life. And, um I know there's a great story uh, behind, well, I say great with respect, a story, a motivation, I think an inspiring story, people that may have gone through this. And I know, you know, a lot of people have gone through, you know, adversity in their lives. And you certainly did at a young age and you overcome it. And now, you know, you're striving, even though there are situations that you have to deal with. But I wanted to share that story with our audience. Can you talk us a little bit about that? I can, and I think that's it's a good way for people to get to know me better. A lot of people just kind of judge without meaning to, um, yeah. but it's amazing. I have survived 100% of my worst days, and um, as a child, I was in and out of CPS. Um, I was in foster care. I was finally adopted. When I was adopted, uh, my adopted mom was very abusive. I ended up running away. Then I was homeless, and um, the only thing that I knew that would keep me safe was getting my GED and enlisting in the service. That that gave me food, that gave me a career, that gave me a place to live, it gave me a family that I was so hungry for. So I enlisted in the Texas Army National Guard, and I had hopes of going full-time um, because they're like, yeah, just go ahead and enlist. If you like it, go full-time. So that was the original plan. But while on one of my, my first deployment, it was stateside. And again, this is through Texas. So back then it was Operation Jumpstart. And we were deployed down to McAllen, Texas. And I was a diesel mechanic. Um, back then it was a 63 Bravo. And while I was down there, um, I guess because I, I love working out, but I was also working outdoors. Um, something about my body fat and my hormone levels, I ended up having... Um, cervical cancer and a lot of it too i don't know if, if people do a lot of research on cancer cancer is abnormal cell growth so it also has a lot to do with your diet and your ph balance it just allows it to grow kind of like a bacteria but it's cancer um but anyways i had cancer when i was 20 uh 21 and it was it was difficult because i that was my sense of security was being in the military. And I wanted to do that for life. I wanted to retire. Um, and I wasn't even able to deploy. I was non-deployable. I had a permanent profile. So I was able to go on hurricane missions. 
and help out stateside, but I couldn't go overseas with the guys in my unit. And, you know, like they're my battle buddies. I want to be there for them. We all worked in the motor pool, but I had to stay back and they continued to go on deployment. So it was tough for me because it already was hard that my future was uncertain, but then having cancer and then having health complications thereafter, um, it just kind of makes you less of a person. And it was really difficult. And then going, I guess going forward now, and um, you know, I'm engaged to be married and I've, I've fought cancer another time since then, not during this relationship, but you almost feel less of a woman um, I have Picos polycystic ovary syndrome, and I also have endometriosis. And it, um, there, there's not a cure. There's no way to fix it. They don't know really what causes it other than they say it could have been the complications from cervical cancer. But sometimes I just, like, it's hard because I won't ever be a mom. Uh, um, I don't know what that feels like. I sometimes don't feel like it worries me if my future in-laws may have wished that they could have had grandkids or well I have cancer again. So there's it's always these uh, yeah. I guess seeds of doubt or it's always on the back of my mind per se. Yeah, that's understandable because it's not it's not something that okay you you won the battle against cancer and that's it. You can continue your life. You have obviously you can continue your life. But it's right. definitely from what it sounds like and ongoing ramifications, and it's not going to go away in the foreseeable future, just things that you have to deal with. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, and the, with flare-ups, it can happen at any time. The, so the endometriosis, um, it's almost like, it can almost feel like a heart attack or something because the cysts are rupturing um, outside of either your uterus or your ovaries or anything like that. So you have sharp pains and you just you don't even know when it will happen. So there's been times I've been like in Home Depot and I just double over in pain and we have to, my fiance and I, he now knows, but it, I can be having a great day and then all of a sudden it just hits me. And they say it's an invisible disease and it really is because I look great. I look fine. Um, I'm healthy per se, but no one knows the pain and I'm the one that has to deal with it every day and not as a woe is me story but it's just it's a it's a pain <laughs> how does your other than your life like when you plan out your day you know what's each one of us you know get up in the morning and plan the day out how does dealing with that affect your planning other than the pain and all that but as far as planning your day out how does that affect coming into effect like is there something that you say like well i can't do that like normal people would have because of this situation or is it just you know are there things that stop you from saying okay i can't just be you know go by myself on this because something might happen or is there anything like that that you have to deal with sometimes driving um and i haven't even told my fiance this so once he <laughs> watches this he's probably going to get on to me um because like i said i double over so it's not even a choice i can't I can't control the ruptures or the pain. So when I'm driving, it's like my body kind of locks up and my vehicle is a standard. So I have to be able to shift and drive. But other than that, I am okay. And I won't even mind if I knew what day it would happen or if I had some, you know, telltale signs. But um, I just, I think I'm so blessed to have lived this long through everything I've been through, that even though it may affect my day, I have to still make the most of that day because I don't know if that is the last. I mean, and none of us know if it's our last day. So even though I have these problems, I'm still going to live my life the fullest I can every single day. Yeah, that's obviously that's uh, the best way to go about it. And it's interesting because sometimes you don't realize that, you know, a normal day-to-day -day person, you can't, it's, uh, there are people out there, different situations that, can't just plan out that they normally like anybody like everybody else or the majority of the person and that's a good point how does it affect you in as far as your emotional side do you at any point feel like angry with life no um because i'm alive so mm -hmm. 
I, I sometimes get upset that I can't have children, but my life is beautiful and this my life is exactly how it should be and I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be right now. All the bad crap, everything I went through made me who I am, but me being angry is perpetuating that cycle and it it's it's cultivating more anger, more resentment and people can feel that vibration and they can feel that. Like just like when you walk in a room and maybe somebody was arguing, you can feel that tension. Yeah. I don't I don't want to be that person. Like, so even on my bad days, I want to inspire anyone, any condition, anything at all, any age, any sex, any race, like, because we, we're, we're humans and we crave that interaction with each other, but we also need more good people out there. And my life has almost been cut short so many times that I just have to be thankful and be grateful and make the most of it i i mean i, I can't be angry because that's not helping anyone but, Was it, oh, go ahead i'm sorry I'm no, sorry. No, 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 no no you're fine um i was thinking about advice for other people um yeah. so say it's really hard like um when people do pass away you don't know what to say um yeah. or if someone like a dog passed away or, or if you're going through an illness or anything we just don't know um and when it comes to infertility or any kind of i don't want to say just female problems but i think instead of a lot of people try to take a lot of people are like well you're lucky you can't have kids or yeah. or at least it's not this or you're lucky this and i think it's just listen or um, ask, like, what is it like? Or what can I do? Or instead of offering, uh, I don't even know how to put it, like, instead of just trying to make light of the situation or tell them how lucky they are, just listen. That's a good point. And that's exactly what I wanted to ask you. Because sometimes I, you have a friend that, you know, a loved one passed away. And you feel the urge to say, well, you want to say something to show that you care. And a lot of times, we'll, because we maybe haven't gone through that, we don't know exactly how the person feels, may say something stupid or hurtful without knowing it. And and it's so embarrassing because I've done things like that where I want to console a friend and I say something that's completely stupid and somebody has to correct me and says, do you realize how hurtful that came out? And you're so embarrassed because you're like, that's not what I wanted to do. I, you know, I don't want it to be as insensitive jerk so i i thank you for saying that because a lot of times we just have to listen especially if like a guy we don't know what it is to you know go through what you've gone through we, there's no way to say oh i understand no we don't we don't understand because we haven't gone through that it's not even close much else all the other thing, things that you have to deal with all your life so a lot of times just listening and asking hey how can i help or help me understand it so i'll know you know and, and showing caring and compassion not by trying to say something smart or something that you think it's going to make them feel better because at the end of the day is what's going to help the other person out it's just listening listening and saying that you care showing that you care more than anything so that's a good point yeah what, I think, I, I, right. no you're fine. i think as men y'all are programmed to take care of us, to take yes. care of the situation, to take away the pain, to make things right. That's just in your DNA and that's fine. Um, but being aware of sometimes you can't fix it. And just like you said, just listening, but as humans, and I'm the same way, it's really hard to just listen if it's like an awkward silence. Like if even if the person doesn't want to talk, it's really hard for people to just be in the moment um, but it's just, it's it's a habit and you know, men can't help it just as much as women can't help sometimes just exploding or being emotional. It's just who we are, but understanding how we communicate and how we operate. And then like you said, just listening. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, sometimes we just have to take a step back and just listen. You know, don't try to negotiate recently because again, you can't. If you haven't gone through that, how can you think that your reasoning is the correct way to see it? There's no, that's, it doesn't make sense. It's just listening and taking a step back and just gathering it all in and then 
trying to help, trying to, you know, understand what the other person is before saying anything. And that's a great point. I know that when I look at your social media account and talking to you on the pre-recording, you have this kind of like happy-go-lucky personality, this lively personality. And it's kind of, it contrasts with, you know, what you've gone through in life. What would you tell somebody that is going through whatever hardship, even if it's not compared to what you've gone through or similar hardship or any hardship in life that may feel down on themselves, may feel like they're not, may feel worthless as a person, whether it's a woman or a man, or are just angry in life. What, what got you into just, you know, being such this high positive personality instead of just, you know, what normally, not normally, I wouldn't say normally, but what you can justifiably say, well, we can see why this person is upset at life. Okay. Um, honestly, it sounds so basic, but it's a choice. I choose to be happy and I choose to infect others with happiness. Um, you got to just think like if, if someone's pissed off and angry and depressing or that we're having a horrible day, but every single day is that way. And it's always something people don't like that. People don't want to hear that. And you typically don't want to be around that. But if you're positive or someone's smiling and someone's having fun, you're instantly gravitating towards that. And that makes you want to be happy and have fun or laugh or whatever it may be. And I just think it's that energy that we're together. Um, I mean, I have to make sure my cup is full, but when my cup is full every single day by my choices, I like to give to others and put other people's cups as well. Well, that's a good outlook in life. And I know it's well, everybody's different, right? For some people, that choice may be simpler than others. But at the ultimate, at the end of the day, it's, I think, well, we've all had a, you know, we've all had our hands dealt. So we have to try to make the most of it. And of course, for some of for some of us, it's easier to say than the others. And the good, the good thing is, we have a choice to not judge other people, you know, and try to understand what they're going through, especially our loved ones. And if that person is struggling with making that choice, like you did, then it's a good way instead of judging. It's a good practice, right? Instead of judging, just try to be there for that person and try to look past maybe those um, hard times that, that or the dark times that that person is going through emotionally and not be judgmental and try to understand. Well, I was thinking too, um, not to make it cliche, but we like how we love how to kayak fish or we yes. like to be sports. I feel like if you don't have a passion or a hobby that gives you life as well as a mentor, we always need someone that's doing better in life but not in a fake social media way and in yeah. an earnest way where we could trust them and seek that advice. I think for having a mentor and then having a healthy hobby, um, that's a really great way to help your friends that might be struggling, just teaching them your hobby or taking them out with you and um, getting them out of whatever that environment might be that is perpetuating how they feel. Yeah, that's that's a good point because we all need an outlet, right? Especially now with the pandemic and it, it affects people differently. Some people are more affected by it, especially people suffering from depression. Being by themselves is is hard, you know. Isolating from other people is hard. They need that interaction. It's, it's hard to just flip that switch and say, well, now I'm going to be isolated from everybody else and I'm going to be fine. It doesn't work that way. How does... Fly fishing, and I know you touched on it, but like fly fishing, kayak fishing help you when when you really feel like you've had a bad day as far as mental or emotional. Uh, as as happy-go-lucky as I am, I could use a whole lot of patience. <laughs> so <laughs> I think with fly fishing, it not being so easy has really taught me patience. Because I can't fake that. When I'm having a bad day, I can fake it and make myself get out of that funk and be happy again. But, ooh, that patience. Uh, so fly fishing for me, it, it's that element. And it, it's it, it's a therapy for myself, but it, it's just being on the water. So I have found that when I am out fishing 
and it might be the rhythm of my casting or the water bubbling past me or feeling the current on my leg. All of that puts me in the moment and I really can't think of anything else because I'm watching for the fish rising or I'm trying to see where my fly is or if I'm mending my line, there's so much to it that I don't have space to think about anything negative or yeah. relish anything or worry about anything because I'm fishing. What else is there to think about? Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and just being out there, you know, it's, it's hard to be upset when you're out there just seeing joint yeah. even if you're not catching a fish. How does um, how does your social media uh, play into all this? Because I know like social media can be such a great tool, but especially for outdoor persons like yourself, like myself, I know you love hunting, you love um, fishing, and there's always that. With all due respect to everybody that has a different opinion, there's that ignorant mentality that they feel that just because you hunt or fish you're a bad person and i and you have to deal with the hatreds and all that and and i see it on other accounts where i'm you know i i see the comments coming up and i'm like how can people be so hate somebody that's you know practicing a passion in their life in a responsible way and just wants to share that passion how do you deal with a lot of stuff like that like especially considering what you've gone through just Hear somebody that doesn't, or to see somebody that doesn't know, you just put a negative comment trying to question your character. If you have gone through that, and I'm assuming you have, because it's social media, it's the internet, and it's evil in a lot of ways. How do you kind of like cope with that? Um, well, I can I can already already think of one uh, scenario that that happened or incident, and then I I want to go back to something else in a second. Um, but I yeah. posted a photo of Joshua elk hunting I was so proud and he was smiling while he was holding up the elk head yeah and a woman went off on my post I don't understand how you can be smiling whenever you killed that animal and went on and I was like you have to understand we hunt the eat we do yeah. not wait part of the animal if, if, if we don't have to unfortunately in idaho we couldn't bring the bone marrow back with us um i mean even down to the bone marrow everything we can get off the animal that's how we live the next year and no offense i'd rather eat something that yes. my fiance killed out in nature that doesn't have antibiotics or pump full of all this medication or whatever the stuff they're putting in animals these days i know where that food is coming from and I feel safer and he's feeding us as a family. It yes. wasn't out, it wasn't out of pure joy. And he smiles, but what people don't understand, um, and men can be men, but most of the men, whenever they kill a beautiful elk or uh, a sheep or some animal that took a lot of time, they cry. It's a very yeah. emotional experience. And Joshua, my fiance, thanks the animal. Like he'll put his hand on it. Just he'll have a moment to reflect because yes, that animal gave their life so we can continue our lives, and we choose to eat meat. But um, that's just that's how we live our life. So when I comment, I comment out of um, I try to give them the benefit of the doubt that a they're a troll, b they don't know what they're talking about, but me being ugly is just gonna cause argument. I'd rather state that, you know, he's feeding our family. I've had other people that aren't even following leave negative comments. So how you even came across my page, I don't know. But obviously, you're just there to leave a bad comment, you know. You're actively looking for people to leave bad comments. That's what I, unfortunately. And, right. And then going back to who I am and my character. So when I first started my, uh, my page, um, Lady Angler Lynn, a year and a half ago. I didn't know where to start to get knowledge on fly fishing because we're really fortunate with so much technology, but then there's too much information and I didn't know where to start yeah. whatsoever. So there was a few women that I was following that um, they're kind of like my heroes. So I would comment or I would send them a private message. And they would not give me the time of day. And I 
told myself then, if I ever had any kind of following, I would engage with every single person. Not not a robot and not some, you know, guy being gross, but yeah, of course. Every person that left a good comment or a DM asking questions about anything fly fishing wise that I would be there. And a lot of times I know you've already noticed I'll use my own voice. I'll use a voice recording yes. because I'm not going to hire someone else to do my social media. I want people to know that I'm engaged in them. I'm a real person just like them. I'm a newbie just like them, but I have my influence, my I influence people, but I'm still real. And that was my main thing with social media. I want to be real. And that's a good point because that's when I think of both in, in this segment where we talk about real life um, stories, I always think about, you know, people in the industry that are leading or innovating products, people that are tournament anglers, people that are content creators, people that uh, just uh, uh, work like, in, like a nonprofit organization to help the community grow. That's the kind of people that I want on my show. Not the people that are fake, not the people that are trying to catch a shack. But there's not a problem with it. I mean, we all have to make a living, you know, but there's a way to do it responsibly. And one thing that I've known following your account for the last year is that I have a lot of respect for the way that you conduct yourself and not to be judgmental because it's not my place to be judgmental. But I, at the end of the day, we all have to make a judgment on what account we're going to follow and what not. And I want to, I want to phrase this in a way that people don't understand. That's not that we're judgmental, but yes, at the end of the day, we have to make judgment calls and we base and we make our judgment calls based on what we see and what's available for us to see. And sometimes we see accounts that's like, yeah, this person, in my opinion, from what they're showing is they're not really interested in the community. They're more interested in other things that I am personally either opposed to or not in favor. But in your case, your account has always been about the sport, you know, or the the lifestyle that comes with, you know, fly fishing, kayak fishing, hunting, being outdoors. And I have a lot of respect for you that way because it could be, there's a lot of easier ways, especially for women to grow their account and get thousands of followers and not necessarily in a way that's going to put you, give you credibility. But you've always shown throughout your post and your social media engagements that you're here because you love this. You have a passion for it and you want to grow in a responsible way. I can attest to that. You and I have talked about, you know, six months ago and we recently started talking again. And I was really thankful for you when I had questions. Hey, I noticed you commented this um, and you replied, yeah, this is why and all this. And I have a lot of respect for you and I. Encourage all my listeners, if you're looking for good content creators and good accounts, I'm not saying it because you're my guest, but really, you can see it. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the little ticker on the bottom. Lady Angler Lens on TikTok, right? And on Instagram. Do you also have Facebook or YouTube? I do. So I've got everywhere is Lady Angler Lens. And um, I'll say what you didn't say, and that's fine. I thank you for following me for the right reasons and for noticing how hard I've worked. Um, but I chose not show skin. Um, I chose yeah. not to my body uh, because that's, there's nothing, that's not even deep. There's nothing there. So I created another page for other lady anglers and the hashtag, funny enough that I decided to use was less skin, more skill. And I lost quite a few followers <laughs> but you're right the ones you don't need yeah. yeah it's a skill it's a hobby it's a sport i'm not there to be in a bikini to go fishing first of all that's not fun for that's not fun but i also i want to know that if a man is following me and he is scrolling and looking he has nothing to be ashamed of if, if his daughter is there if his wife is there if his girlfriend's there because these men also want their daughters to fish, but they don't want them to have to learn how to fish in a bikini. You don't have to do it that way. It is a sport and we deserve the same respect, but we have to get that respect, unfortunately. And dressing in a bikini or you're getting your followers any other way, you're disrespecting yourself. And 
that's why I wanted to cultivate content that would inspire other people. And I really thank you for taking the time to notice that. Um, that assures me that I am on the right track. And that, and it's a good point because, again, I, I'm a guy and I'm married and I don't want, like I said, if I, I want to be able to tell my wife, yeah, you can look at my Instagram, see who I'm following, who I'm not, what comments I do, what comments and where I comment, you know, and what type of comments do I make. I think it's important uh, for everyone. Just, you know, I don't want to be judgmental. There are people out there, um, both guys and girls, that, like you said, the more skin, the more followers I get. And if that's the way you want to conduct yourself, yeah, I'm not going to argue with your success. <laughs> but it's also it's also interesting how some people complain about, well, not getting the respect from the industry. Well, you're not here for the industry. You're here to show off other things that are not related to it. So you getting you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have all these followers <laughs> and pretend that they're following because of your skills or your per great personality or your <laughs> qualities as a woman. Where you know you were showing other things. Show, yeah. show us, you know, show us your skills, show us your quality as a person, show us your character as a person, as opposed to showing other things. And that goes for guys too. I mean, so some content media creators that a lot of time, and I and I've been outspoken about it, and I'm not going to say names, but there's a lot of them that just thrive on clickbait. You're not doing us any good in the industry. You're just giving us a bad name in the industry. You're just inspiring a bunch of other kids out there that want to, you know. Uh, um, follow you and have the same success you are by mimicking the things that we don't want in the fishing industry or in the outdoor industry because it's disrespectful and it gives us a bad name. And that, like you mentioned, it that goes for guys and girls. So it's a good point that you make. I know a lot of times people are going to say, well, they're just being haters. No, it's not about being haters because I don't have a problem with it. Those accounts, but don't expect to get the same respect you get from somebody that's actually putting um, the interests of the community before their own interests. It's true. It's very true. Yeah. And again, we all, there's, there is, we have the ability now, a lot of us, and to make money, monetize out of being social media. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. So I don't want people to understand. Yeah, there's, if you can do both things, do both things. But there's a way to do it but still bringing respect to yourself and the community. Yep, I fully agree. <laughs> what are you looking most forward to this year? I know you, you're, when is your wedding day, by the way? February. Is it year? February, uh, nice. February 20th, and it's going to be on the river. Uh, we're hoping to be able to get in a little bit of fishing beforehand, and then hopefully afterwards. <laughs> we're going we're gonna, to uh, get married in between a fishing trip. How about that? Well, I, when we started the pre-recording, I said, this is probably marriage, you know, this whole process of getting married um, is probably the most stressful thing you're ever going to go through. And now I kind of feel ashamed for what I said, because now that I hear your life story, I was like, yeah, you totally got this. Like, you've gone through a lot worse. Although I know marriage is stressful, but you've gone through a lot worse, let's just say, and survived. Right. Well, my, he is my best friend. And I'm not just saying that because like we're in the happy you know early honeymoon stages he is such a calm and collective understanding man and we trust each other we don't let anything get in the way and we also have really strict rules that even if you might be mad you still say i love you and kiss each other and go to bed or like we just we we never say ugly things to each other we never trust or anything like that and i think to have a good marriage you got to show up and you got to work for it every single day. And that's yeah. our point. Yeah. That's a good point. It's not always easy, but that's a good point. And, and I like what you just mentioned. That's something me, and I, I'm not here to gloat about my marriage because we struggle just like every other marriage. We have our ups and downs, but that's a good thing that you mentioned it because I I don't ever remember a person and my wife or calling her names and neither has she to me. And again, there it's not doesn't mean I have the happiest. I, I want to think I have the happiest marriage uh, out there, but it's not to say that it it doesn't have its ups and downs and its challenges. And there are days where you think about why the heck did I get married? And that's normal, you know. 
but as long as the respect is there, you know, things can be figured out. Yeah, you always speak life. I, I tell this to my friends. They'll try to be negative. They'll be like, oh, I'm fat or I don't, I'm not good at this. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, speak life. Like, don't talk bad about yourself because yourself is listening. And the same thing with your relationship. Speak life. Just got to be speaking life into it. <laughs> Let me ask you this. And going back a little bit full circle to, you know, what you have to deal through health wise. What do you think is, uh, and I want to, at the angle that I'm looking for this is for, again, for guys that have a significant other or a sister or a mom that has gone through things similar or going through things similar to you. What has been one of the things that Joshua has been, Joshua, right? That's, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Uh, Joshua has been more supportive to you. And, you know, what are the things that maybe without calling him out, of course, but that he has struggled to or trying to like had his eyes open that, Maybe somebody else out there, a guy that, you know, again, has a, a wife, a sister, a mom, or a cousin, or a friend, a female friend that's gone through that. What advice would you give them? Um, so where he struggled, and this is where I, I don't even want to cause arguments, but men are men, women are women. Men mm -hmm. are masculine. They wanna, it's in their nature to take care of their wife, their spouse, their child. And for him, he felt so helpless. It was a few months ago. Um, we actually had to go to the ER. My pain was so bad. The doctors couldn't figure it out. And it was probably just something to do with my medical stuff. But I couldn't walk. And he felt so helpless that he couldn't do anything. And I think that he struggles with not being able to fix it. And it's really hard. But where he has excelled is whenever he can't fix it, he's there. Like, however he can be, if it's touching me or hugging me or if it's a heated blanket or whatever it is, listening. And I think that's just, as a man, just listen. Put your phone away, turn the TV off, and have eye contact and just listen. Be in the moment. Um, and, and that's the best thing. And that's the same thing with friends or family. Put your phone away. Um, physically show that you're engaged in that person and you're investing in that time and that moment with them. And um, that, that's an action that does speak louder than trying to give advice or words, you know? That's a good point. And I also like what you mentioned, because guys, sometimes we feel like we have to manage the situation. Well, the reality of this thing, as much as Joshua loves you and knows you and wants to be there for you, the, the person that really knows how to manage this, the, the health situation that you're going through at that moment uh, and, you know, on a daily basis and manage it, you know, um, as uh, uh, short term and long term, the best person knows that is you. And sometimes we can see, I can see as a guy, and I'm not saying Joshua, but I can see as a guy for myself, I can see, I can see myself trying to manage something and then have, have it to backtrack and understand, yes, I am the man. Yes, I am the provider. Yes, we all have that um, primal instinct to be the protector, the provider, and the the, the head of the household where in this situation is more like your wife or your significant other has this, you know, she's got it. She, she can handle it. You just have to show support. You can't try to pin, pin your significant other against herself saying, no, you have to do it this way. No, let's listen. Let's listen. We might think that this is a better idea on how to manage it. But in reality, that other person knows more than it's because it has in your case, like has to deal it either on a daily basis or throughout a few years now. Exactly. Okay. Well, Rebecca, thank you so much. I know we talked for almost an hour. Um, you got <laughs> weddings to get planned and a whole lot of things that, that you have to do. And I wanted to give you a chance to plug in some of your uh, sponsors. There's, there's quite a few, um, off the top of my head, there's two people for sure. Um, it set you free outdoors. They have been amazing as a company. Um, it's a fly fishing um, company, but they have equipment. Um, they have products. They even help veterans out. And you don't have to have a disability um, for them to help you um, with advice or trips or equipment. And he's even one of my mentors. The more I talk to him, the more even I learn about who I am as a person, how I should react situations his name's adam and uh 
it's just been really um, influential in this past year for my personal growth as well as my fly fishing growth and the knowledge he's given me. Um, and that company is just awesome. And then another person is Mike from No Leaf Clover. He has handmade nets that he makes. Funniest dude. I mean, funny, funny, funny. And his drive is thick. Like, no one can compare to his drive. He's out. He's getting up. He's in the shop. He's making these wooden nets. I've got some behind me. He has so much drive, so much dedication, and we talk on a daily basis. So these are people that have helped me out, but they have ended up becoming a friend and someone I can rely on and talk to. And I'm just thankful for them. Um, and I've also got some people that are awesome, like they'll send clothing or gear, the Fly Tribe, as well as Live Native. And I'm very picky. As you know, it took me a while to get on this podcast. Uh, just like you said, you, you looked at my content. Do I want to wear their clothing or use their products or anything like that? I want to make sure that our morals are on the same page, that we mm -hmm. have the same belief and everything like that. Same thing with you. Um, I, I invest in you or I want to be a part of something because you are a good person and you are Thank you. Helping others. So, um, I think it's just full circle. We forget to be kind to each other and help each other out. So the companies that I want as in, as sponsors that are help me out, it's not just so they can pay me or help me or give me free flags. You can get that anywhere. But whether or not they're actually helping their customers, their following, it really influenced who I want to uh, work with and collaborate with. So I know there's many more out there. If I forgot other ones, it's not because I don't care. Um, I have quite a few people that fill my cup. And obviously Joshua, he's goodness, he is so patient and still teaching me new things. Um, I'm gonna learn how to throw a streamer so I can finally get a brown trout. No one can nice. believe it. I still have not gotten a brown trout, so uh, I'm thankful for him. I wrote down, yeah, that that those are my main people. Um, yeah. Well, other than changing your last name to Lens, what's gonna be your new last name, by the way? It's going to be Baker. I'm going to keep Baker. it lit. Oh, yeah. Joshua Baker. I forgot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's I've already done the branding, and Lady Angler Lens has a good thing to it. Plus, if I was Lady Angler Baker, people would probably be like, is this like a, a cooking ba show? Or like, <laughs> <laughs> so, in real life, I'm taking his name. I'm so blessed. I can't wait to be a baker. Uh, our little wedding hat. Hashtag is the real bakers like R E E L, so cheesy. But I love him. We love fishing, and I'm I'm blessed. I'm gonna be a baker. What can your fans look forward to as far as content um, for 2021? Okay, Anything guys. The works. So, yes, I don't even know where I put it. I've got a camera, a Panasonic G7. I'm gonna start doing vlogs. So nice. many people have asked me to do vlogs I guess because as you know I'm just really quirky I show my bloopers I show when I mess up I'm real so I, I want to kind of start taking uh, y'all on my adventures whether it be rooftop tent camping or if it's fly fishing or kayak bass fishing so I'm going to start doing that um, I plan on doing a few retreats where I'm teaching women um, eventually I'll help men out too, but women sometimes feel intimidated on the water. So I want to get groups of women together, teach them how to fly fish, how to camp, how to build a fire, how to, even if it's like hunting, how to skin animals. Um, I just want to grow, but I want to give back to people as much as I can. So that's, that's the whole thing is I want other people to have this hobby and just have this obsession. Yeah. And kind of like enjoy it you know the way the the way we all enjoy it because a lot of times i know people want to like they invest like in a kayak or fishing and then they don't catch a fish and then they're like ah oh, screw it i'll go move something up this sport is so enjoyable if you just give it a chance and try to learn and you know kind of surround yourself even if it's just social on social media but content creators are going to help you kind of enjoy more of the fishing experience so that's awesome we Thank you so much, Rebecca. It's been really an honor to have you. I'm sure my uh, audience, uh, listeners, going to enjoy this. Thank you for sharing your story. It's a powerful story. It's a story that can help out other people. 
And that's the goal with my podcast, you know, joy company of anglers out there and content creators and tournament anglers, but also kind of hear their stories and we can all take away a little bit of something, even if it's for us that we're going through things or we have a loved one that's going through similar things. There's always something we can learn and apply it in our lives. So thank you for so much for sharing your story. It's an amazing story. I know it's not always hard, easy to talk about, but thank you so much. Well, it's not always easy, but it's people like you that are making a difference in other people's lives. Thank you. So it, I thank you for giving me the time to speak. Thank you for having that interest and wanting to help other people out through different stories that other people can relate to. So. I know this takes time and everything, and I really appreciate what you do. And again, you can follow Rebecca Lenz as Lady Under Euclid Lenz on TikTok, Instagram, um, YouTube, Facebook and, as well. And Facebook and Twitter. Like, I'm everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> same same uh, name, right? Lady Angler Lenz, right? Correct. Yes. Made it simple. Perfect. So once again, thank you all, my listeners, if you made it this far. Thank you. Have a great day. Stay safe. Take the necessary precautions when you're on the water. Wear your PFDs. Do whatever you need to do to make sure you get home to your loved one. Have a good day. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle and Fin. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, and fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Fin. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Fin on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com 